Hey guys, today I'm going to give you a very stern warning and I try not to put my own personal opinions too much into the channel, but of course some of it drips in. I had a worker, she was our social media specialist in 2017 and part of 2018. Her boyfriend's co-worker, they work in oil and gas construction. Uh, both of them don't have uh, educations, they have uh, high school degrees. They invested in Bitcoin when it was $16,000 a Bitcoin early 2018. That turned out to be a disaster. And today I'm going to tell you the reality of taking advice from strangers online. There is a reason your parents told you about stranger danger. And the reason is you cannot trust strangers online. If you never met someone in person and you are watching a video and set stranger A tells you to buy something, you have to do your own homework. You can't just trust the market. You can't trust that you're going to outsmart the market or some random person on YouTube knows more than the market. So we're going to see a video. Uh, he posted on MTG Finance. I remember this well. And the prices actually are mentioned of both Bitcoin and the Ethereum, which has tanked a ton in price. So Magic and Bitcoin go hand in hand. The largest exchange for Bitcoin, MTG Ox, is Magic the Gathering Ox, as in Mox. So it's only fitting that this guy sold his collection of $10,000 to buy Bitcoins and other cryptocurrency. This was very, very big. There are some members of the MTG finance community who have made large wagers on cryptocurrency and have lost their hats. I'm not going to call anyone out, but there is a certain person on a certain YouTube podcast who was messing with cryptocurrency around 8,000, Bitcoins at around 8,000. Now it is under 3,400, I believe, today. Oh, it's I dropped a little bit more. So six months ago, how many of you are into cryptocurrency? I'm into crypto, I got wrecked though, can't win them all. And this was six months ago. Imagine if he held his Bitcoins today and he hadn't sold. He would be wrecked even more. Same boat, as soon as I break even again, I'm out. Well, what if I told you that the this actually was the high point six months ago and it has just been on a very steady and very frightening decline. I'm in crypto. That's not a good way to start a discussion. Made an account when Bitcoin was like 20K, but their website was too blank to take money easily because there were so many people. So I never bought any. Good for me. Here is someone who is very happy that he was unable to figure out how to use a website to buy something he which is going to lose a lot of value later on. So there's a video of a MTG finance connoisseur. Uh, that's how he describes himself. I don't like to make stuff up. I just repeat what other people say because I find that in reality, it's actually more interesting to just, uh, reality is more strange than if I were to imagine it or even make it up. Uh, Rudy did a video about this last year. You can go back to watch that uh, video. People are talking about VeChain. And at this point in time, Bitcoin is on a decline. It is on a massive decline. Six months ago, people, uh, it started the year at 16,000. It was under 10. So this guy, He's I why I'm selling my $10,000 MTG collection to buy bitcoins and cryptocurrencies. Do you feel like this was a good decision? The answer was no. If 
he sewed his Beta Mox. It's a beautiful Mox. I, I, from that conditioning, it's a pretty good Mox. You should have kept the Mox. You should have kept the Reserve List. You should have kept your Beta card. That Mox, that Beta Mox is everything you want in an MTG investment. One, it's on a Reserve List. Two, it's, it's very good condition. Three, it's a Power 9. Four, it's a Black Border. So no offense to the white border power nine, but I much prefer a black border. The only one available right now is damage and it costs three thousand dollars, and there are no none available. So a very limited item that has crept up in price. He sold his magic collection with this incredibly rare limited item in it. Supposedly he did. And he bought cryptocurrency in August 2017. The reason that's very important, August 10th, 11th, 2017, is due to the fact that Bitcoin was around $4,000 at that time. Ethereum was $300 at that time. A Bitcoin is about $3,300 right now. Ethereum is less than... It's like 90 or 80. I pulled up the numbers, but the numbers keep like declining so fast that even when I pull it up, uh, I have to make the video the day of because everything keeps plummeting in price. Regardless, I much rather have $10,000 of Power 9, Beta Power 9, Moxin, than $10,000 of Bitcoin. And that this was a decision that MTG Finance really... You know, when you listen to random people online, how to spend your money, you're going to get hosed. Everyone's in it for themselves. And the more they say they are not in it for themselves, the more likely they're going to hose you with a bigger hose. That sounds about right. So mostly it just seems like you want to brag about your collection. I got tired of watching you. At some point, you have to ask why anyone would watch this. There's no information to be had, and there's no personality either. You're just blanketly ta talking to the camera about cards you own. It's not even a crazy amount of cards. The fact that you are selling magic cards, which you have a personal attachment to, for some virtual investing tells me you only care about making money. So I can probably guess why you made the video. You're hoping to get some YouTube money and get on that Pantheon gravy train. So, yep, uh, pretty much. Pretty much. Back to my original story. I think I'm going to end it here. I'll show you some charts and things. Uh, he didn't, if he held Bitcoin from the time that he showed his collection, he would have been much better with the Moxon, much, much better. Uh, Bitcoin took a nosedive. It took a... Best case scenario, he put all his money into Bitcoin and it goes from 4,000 to 3,300. So he loses 700 on a 4,000 investment, roughly 28%. He's losing roughly 28%, which is not great, especially since it's still declining as we speak. But if he put the money into this currency, which is $88, which let's say is um, below 90 and going down, as you can see, it is currently just plummeting into oblivion. This currency at the time was 300. So he would have lost a massive amount of money at, if he had, according to him, he bought many different types of cryptocurrency. Bitcoin actually is the most stable of the bunch. The rest of them, especially the smaller ones, uh, even like something like BitConnect, which was a scam, and everyone lost their money because it was a Ponzi scheme. It was a proven Ponzi scheme. So that's not me saying that that is the federal government who shut it down and you're no longer allowed to even trade BitConnect. So if you have lots of BitConnect coins, well, you're out of luck because you cannot exchange them for anything. So uh, in... August 10th, 2017, this when the video came out, it was about $300. Um, it does spike, but just like Bitcoin, it plummets. It spikes in the beginning of the year and then has a slow decline. None of it, I'm not an MTG finance wizard. 
I have a day job. I could not imagine anyone making money from MTG Finance other than selling you advice. Now, when people sell you advice either via paywall or email list or however they're doing it, that advice is already not good. Uh, the reason that advice is not good is it's not actionable at that time. If everyone knows a card is valuable or a select few people know a card is valuable and everyone goes out and buys it, the card goes up in price not because it got more valuable. The card goes up in price because other people are buying it with you. So you feel good about yourself. The person next to you feels good about yourself, but that buy list ain't moving a dime. <laughs> so you just host each other. Uh, so uh, these are the guys who sold their magic collection to buy Bitcoin and other cryptocurrencies. I really would want them, I would be open to having a dialogue because I am interested in this. Um, I have a very negative co connotation of crypto because of BitConnect. Uh, BitConnect was a scam. I told my worker not to invest in BitConnect, but she did anyway because her boyfriend uh, controlled the finance. It was this very complicated thing and supposedly, but uh, she, she was broke. She's broke. And there's no other way for me to say it. They didn't have a lot of money to begin with. And they, they put um, a lot of money, for them at least, they put five figures into a cryptocurrency called BitConnect, which turned out to be a big scam. And she's working for me part-time. So she has a full-time job. Then she's working for me part-time. And then she's working for one of my friends part-time who owns her own agency as well. So she's working 80 hours just to have a home and you know their retirement fund you, you hear about bernie madoff and all of that stuff and you know lehman brothers and merrill lynch back in the day and jamie diamond but you never really see the effects of it like i at least never saw the effects of it i didn't know anyone who put that much money in uh, but this is what i mean i treat my workers very well and you know i've gave her every single advice not to get involved um, not to get involved in something that you don't understand and that's the same with mtg finance very few people understand mtg finance i cannot move a price of a card i don't have the buying power the hundred thousand channel fireball could drop a hundred thousand on a card and buy them all out star city games has done this many times in the past I don't have that buying power and very few individuals do. So the markets move based on the stores, not based on individuals. So when people online say, oh, I bought X amount of moats, I bought X lines, I diamonds. Oh, look at me, look at me. And they never, you know, they're shooting it from a potato camera and who knows if they actually have the cards. It, it's all false. It's so, it's as fake as BitConnect is. And it frustrates me to see it in the community over and over again, where these financial experts, like these connoisseurs, as they call themselves in this Reddit post, um, they just take advantage of people's trust. I hope when you watch my videos, you know that everything I say, you just take over a grain of salt. Um, it's coming from a very biased view. I'm not one of these new Magic players. No, I remember Magic when it was something different. Completely different from what it is today. It used to be for super nerds. Now they have, you know, spread it out to, I don't know, popular kids. I, I don't even know. Now they're trying to both commercialize it and unnerd it. Like It's like the Marvel Comics. When I grew up, if you read a Marvel comic, you would probably be beat up in high school or middle school. I'm not kidding. If you played Dungeons and Dragons, you would be beat up. Your gym teacher would beat you up. And you think I'm kidding, but that's how I grew up. And now, you know, everyone and their grandmother is like into Marvel. And, and they're very excellent movies, don't get me wrong. But I never thought that Luke Cage which is a very like, that's like one of my favorite characters. And now he's 
popular. And it's like, no, the reason I liked Luke Cage was he's this character I really liked a lot. Uh, no one's heard about him. And I can talk, you know, nerdy. So when the nerds talk about Luke Cage, hey, you know, hey, you're a real nerd. I'm a real nerd. Too. Now everyone knows Luke Cage. Uh, Jessica Jones. I, I didn't read Jessica Jones, but um, I'm trying to remember. Guardians of the Galaxy. That wasn't a very popular comic book. Or um, they come, They're coming up with a new movie, and I love this comic book. It's like Cloak and Dagger. I loved reading it when I was a kid, and now they're going to make that popular movie too. And it's like, ugh, someone please stop. Stop. And I know this is very unpopular opinion to have, right? But uh, that's what I am. Um, I am a relic of the old magic, the old school magic, because that's when where I grew up. That's how I remember magic. Mike Long, Mark Justice, and they were good times. I really, really had a great time playing magic because uh, you knew that if you played magic in middle school or elementary school or in high school, and someone else play magic, you would automatically be friends with them. You wouldn't cheat them. You wouldn't steal their cards. There was no reason to do that because you're in it together. You're in it together. It's you versus them. It's you versus the jocks and the cool kids. You have chosen magic because you enjoy it. And you enjoy nerdy stuff. You enjoy computers. I remember having a Dell computer when I was in middle school. No one had laptops back then, but I had one because I really enjoyed coding. Or what I thought was coding at the time, of course. And <laughs> it's just so bad. Anyway, bye.